Kicking off the list at number 10, Particle Accelerator. We love science experiments, baking soda and vinegar, a DIY volcano, boom, let's make a mess. But what if we flew too close to the sun? What if one experiment could, I don't know, hypothetically swallow our known universe? Sounds fun, let's do it. Sir Martin Rees, Britain's royal astronomer, shines some light on a dark possibility in his book, On the Future. The particle accelerator is this massive machine that does exactly that. It smashes these charged particles together at a high speed, all in the name of science. Now we're trying to further understand condensed matter physics, and while it sure sounds impressive, what if it goes south? What if somebody fucks up? Well, if that happens, it could possibly destroy our known universe. Apparently, these particles smashing together could create this strange matter that shrinks Earth down to 300 feet in diameter, so we'd be tiny or dead. Either way, we'd be like, oh shit. Or it creates a black hole that would suck away our entire existence. Thanks, Martin. Now we'll be able to sleep because I'm thinking of particle colliders. Freddy Krueger and also particle colliders. I'm like, Ugh. This holiday season sucks, can't sleep. Number nine, black holes. Christopher Nolan can't even save us from this one. There are three types of black holes. We got stellar, supermassive, and intermediate mass. And they can all kill us easily if they wanted to. Black holes are formed when a star dies. And in turn, we get the strongest Dyson vacuum ever. It sucks in light, so of course we wouldn't make it. There's no chance. There's about 10 million black holes in the Milky Way right now. And the closest one is about 1,500 light years away. So we're looking good for now. We actually got a photo of a black hole not too long ago. It's beautiful. We're learning more and more every year. And one of the scariest facts that I heard was that black holes will be the last thing in the known universe. And these things orbit as well. They don't just sit in the same spot. Like everything else in the galaxy, black holes are also moving around. Which means one will eventually get close. Do you think they would tell us if a black hole was about to swallow us? I sure hope not. I mean, no spoilers, come on. I'm only on season 27 of my life. Keep it real. Number eight, solar flares. Solar flares just sound scary, you know? Our star heats up, we literally revolve around it, and it blesses us with life and tan lines and all the good stuff, but sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our planet. This then creates a stream of radiation, it's called solar wind. Now normally this is a beautiful event. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this radiation. But too much of a good thing can be disastrous. This month even, on October 9th, a large solar flare was spotted and three days later, it hit. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is still quite strong. The biggest solar event was actually back in 1859. It's called the Carrington event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking some telegraph operators. Imagine that, if this happens again and it's stronger, we're looking at power outages on a massive scale. You'd be playing VR, and then all of a sudden your eyes are like, poof, it just explode. Lovely, immersive. 10 out of 10. Number seven, moving stars. We look at the pyramids of Egypt in awe for many reasons, but as far as placement goes, these three pyramids align with the stars of Orion's belt. But what happens when these stars, like everything else in our known universe, moves? The pyramids won't align with stars forever. They will wander, but which direction will these stars go? That's the, that's the question here. Well, right now, our sun is traveling through the Milky Way. It's carrying us along. We're in this moderately chill space bubble right now, but when we leave this region, say in, I don't know, 50,000 years, we have a great chance of bumping into one of these wandering stars. You think our climate is changing now? Well, you better learn how to be immortal and hang out for 50,000 years. Be a vampire and you'll see what a comet looks like up close. It's very cold and hot at the same time. We're not going to survive. We have like 20 years left, realistically. Number six, artificial intelligence. Okay, this one sounds silly, but we're actually quite close to getting Ultron in real life. God help us. We have robots that do parkour now. Like you can push these things, they would still continue to silly walk. Have you seen those videos where they get pushed and they're like bleep and they keep going? That's crazy. Now imagine if Siri decided to go rogue one day and then take over the body of one of the Boston Dynamic robots. We're fucked. it's game over, that's it. I've seen iRobot, I don't want any part of this. No thank you. According to CB Insights where they asked 52 experts, 52, so specific. They all agreed that AI will eventually be our downfall and by that time, it's too late. I'm sweating reading that, what? The late Stephen Hawking said AI would be impossible to control. Elon Musk has been reinforcing how crucial it is to regulate AI. We can't regulate technology that we can't predict. That's the main thing here. Even Vladimir Putin says AI will have a profound impact on global politics. And are we really going to disagree with Vladimir Putin? No, no we're not. Next. Number five, asteroid impact. Number five, asteroid impact. Of course, one of our leading theories as to how humans can all of a sudden go extinct is an asteroid. 
We've seen movies. These suckers have caused large scale extinction events before us. Every time there's a meteor shower, people think it's beautiful, when in reality, it's like sitting near first and third base at a baseball game. It's flying at you nonstop, like we're way too close. Every meteor shower, I'm just like, if one of these days an asteroid got too close, it would pretty much mean the end of humanity, regardless of where it hits on Earth. In fact, an asteroid named Apophis is set to slam into us in 100 years or so. Now, we originally thought that it would hit in 2029, but now we can add 100 years on top of that. It's a big orbit. So we're okay for now. For your grandkids, though, heads up Whoville. Good luck. Number four, global warming. Okay, this one's, uh, this one's on us, folks. Or at least a little bit. We're for sure to blame in some capacity. Now I'm trying to fight it. Around 90% of scientists say that humans are to blame for global warming, especially people who vape. That's what they said. I read it myself. It's, I'm not making that up. According to climate.gov, we're cooking our planet with heat trapping gases. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere equals heat. Our global average temperature has gone up 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit since the late 90s. Carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, nitrous, and numerous chlorofluorocarbons, which is fun to say, chlorofluorocarbons, nice. More like borofluorocarbons, Billy Madison reference. Stop littering, next. Number three, Yellowstone National Park. Nothing like a big old volcano to shake up your day. The super volcano rumbling under Yellowstone National Park could wipe out millions if it decided to go off one day. It's exploded three times in the past. Two million years ago, pop. 1.3 million years ago, pop, and then 664,000 years ago, boom. The next one, well, it could happen as soon as you click like and subscribe. <laughs> How scary is that? Back in 2014, a team of researchers laid out what an erupting Yellowstone could actually look like in real life, and it's terrifying. It's massive. Entire states would be gone, poof. Hot magma would then rain down as far as San Francisco, and on top of all that chaos, volcanic ash would cover most of our sunlight. It would be a dark and cold world for a little while. They, of course, had a Yellowstone scene in the movie 2012, and while sure, it's cinematic, I guess, it would be a lot louder and way faster. You can't check your rearview mirrors while Yellowstone is blasting off. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, this, you just can't do this. Number two, expanding sun. Our sun isn't strong enough to create a black hole after its death, which is a nice thought after hearing about black holes, you know, sucking at light and your hopes and dreams. This is good news, but we do know that our sun will eventually die and it's set to happen in about, drum roll, seven billion years, so plenty of time to get that tan at the water park. We're still looking all right. It'll eventually become a white dwarf though, just floating in the cosmos. Now we won't get to see this, of course, because we'll be long gone, but if anybody is still hanging out by then, just, you know, still kicking it, still healing around, they'll unfortunately witness the sun get larger and cooler. It's predicted that it'll suck in Venus and Mercury, but as for Earth, well, solar winds generated would hypothetically be strong enough to slow Earth down. So we wouldn't get sucked into the sun, we would instead face a slow, hot death. And you thought it was hot outside now. Well, hang out for a bit. <laughs> well, it's pretty bad, but it'll get worse. And finally, number one, nuclear weapons. In 1938, history changed forever when German nuclear physicist Otto Hahn Fritz Strassmann and Lise Meitner discovered nuclear fission in a lab in Berlin. They discovered that an atom splitting into lighter atoms caused a powerful blast. This was groundbreaking. Humans discovered a new way to power technology, but at the same time, they opened the door for nuclear horrors atomic bombs. On July 16th, 1945, the Trinity test was conducted. The first atomic bomb was detonated in a New Mexico desert. It was deemed a success with mushroom clouds reaching up to 40,000 feet high. This test changed history forever. Roughly 110,000 lives were later lost at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and many believe that nuclear warfare will truly be the end of humanity. The pure impact alone is one thing, but nuclear winters, where clouds of dust and black smoke just block out the sun for days at a time, could obviously have lasting effects. For example, for example, if there was an all-out nuclear war between Russia and the United States, officials predict that temperatures would drop 8 degrees for 5 or 6 years, so we wouldn't even be able to grow food at that time. It would be absolute chaos. Stop bobbing each other. Kicking off the list at number 10, a really old bird. Yep, I'm kicking this list off with a tiny Chinese bird, a little wooden bird. This figurine is incredibly old. It looks like a wooden Monopoly piece almost. It's tiny. And when I say old, I mean like really old. It was carved 13,000 years ago. To give you an idea of how old that is, the pyramids aren't even 5,000 years old yet. 
Yep, mind blown. Just hit you with that one. About half an inch tall, small sculptures like these, perching birds to be more specific, were quite common in ancient Chinese art forms from the Neolithic age. Back in 1958, at the Lingjing site in China, a well was dug out. Now the construction crew went about 16 feet down, and unbeknownst to them, the dirt pile that was accumulating held secrets to our history. Inside this pile, there were ancient tools, sculptures, broken ceramics, then cut to 2005, archaeologists at Shandong University found one of the most important piles of dirt in the world. More importantly, they found this tiny little bird. How cute is that? And you could eat this thing, it's that small. Any piece of history that you could eat, that's rare. That's a pretty rare find. It's like finding a diamond, it's so small. Number nine, Dark Ages tomb. Looking back to the Dark Ages in Shamir Heights, northern Israel, this tomb is massive. It's made up of 400 tons of boulders and stretches to about 65 feet wide. This burial chamber goes back to 4,000 years ago. It could mean that humans were part of an organized society that long ago, especially consider the art that they found on the ceiling inside the dolmen. Check this out. This is the first time art has been documented in one of these chambers in the Middle East, and we haven't quite figured out what the ceiling carvings depict yet. So so far we think arrows or anchors of some sort, but inside the actual grave there were three sets of human remains found as well, so it had been used for quite some time. While excavating the ancient grave site, archaeologists also found colored beads. One of the most intriguing parts of this grave has to be the lines carved onto the ceilings. All these lines connecting to one arc. What does it mean? Any thoughts? Put them down below. Number 8. The Fall of the Roman Republic Okay, looking back to 44 BC, we thought Julius Caesar getting a was a major factor for the Roman Republic's downfall. Well, you know what's even more dangerous than a bunch of dudes running at Julius Caesar? A volcano. Yeah, it's a bit louder too. Thanks to science, we think the main villain in this story came from 6,000 miles away. About a year before Caesar's death, the Omak volcano went off on an island near Alaska. Now the ash cloud that drifted over afterwards, they were such a big deal, and we believe that it caused Rome's social downfall. We look at Arctic ice samples like we do with tree rings. We can literally see layers of history. So we compared the volcanic material to rocks surrounding the volcanoes, and you know, we connect the dots, Bob's your uncle. Sorry, Julius Caesar. We thought you were kinda cooler, I don't know. You're still pretty cool. Number seven, a really old cat. We've covered the Nazca lines here on this channel before, but have you heard about this relaxing fat boy? The Nazca Desert in Peru was already fascinating with its geoglyphs, but among the 2,000 year old massive pieces of ancient art, we had this massive cat that predates the Nazca lines. See, the cat was from the late Paracas era around 500 BC, whereas the lines were from the Nazca culture around 700 AD. It's about 37 meters long, it's big, and we caught it last year at a pretty good time. It was actually really close to fading away thanks to natural erosion, and now the fat cat has since been conserved. Let's go pet it, let's go pet this giant cat on this big hill. Imagine seeing that, I'd be like, oh great joke guys. No, it's a real thing from thousands of years old. No idea why. Number six, Forrest Fenn's treasure. Somebody called Nicolas Cage. We found treasure. We did it. And by we, I mean the 33-year-old Michigan medical student, Jack Stueff. Back in 2010, to fill you in a bit, millionaire Forrest Fenn kicked off a literal treasure hunt. He said he'd hidden a million dollars worth of treasure in the Rocky Mountains somewhere, and the only clue as to where it lays was a 24-line poem. Yeah, like it's Zelda Breath of the Wild. How exciting is that? This treasure brought in thousands of hunters, obviously, five of which lost their lives trying to find this thing. It was a big deal. Jack only found out about this treasure hunt in 2018, so he was late to the party, yet still he found it. Interesting. Obviously, there's no details as to where it was found. Jack remained anonymous for quite some time, because there were legal battles, there were court dates, and honestly, I'd love to see a movie about this whole thing and how it went down. Show us the story of Forrest Fenn's hidden treasure hunt. Add a little Hans Zimmer in the background. Deb it. I'll go see that movie twice. Number five, Ice Age art. More ancient artwork, this time from the Colombian Amazon. Thing is, unlike other drawings found on the ceilings of tombs, this canvas stretches about eight miles. The paintings are even more impressive than that. Dating back to 12,000 years ago, these drawings were made near the end of the last ice age. Thousands of paintings, by the way, not just a handful of arrows either, a lot. These were found in 2017, but it was only last year when they went public with their findings. Those findings being paintings of elephants, massive sloths, horses from the ice age, snakes, birds, and deer. This is now one of the largest collections of rock art in South America. Pregnant women or the origins of the Ninja Turtles. Number four, more mummies. Summer 2020, while most of the world was stuck inside watching Netflix, more than 100 sealed coffins were found. And yes, 
they're occupied. Mm. Found, of course, in Saqqara, Egypt, Egyptian archaeologists have never been more excited. And honestly, I'm pretty jazzed too. Maybe we'll find the body of Cleopatra. Wouldn't that just be dandy? The fact that we found over 100 of these still in great shape is mind blowing because grave robbers have been around since ancient Egyptian days, and for all those to be untouched for this long, crazy. The findings date back to 712 BC, which was a period where Egypt was controlled by foreign civilizations like Persians and Greeks. And the idea that we're finding mummies is great and all, but I I've seen too many Brennan Fraser classics to not be a little concerned at the same time. Please don't open them. I don't know, just leave them. We don't really need to know. Do we? We opened a sarcophagus and like this ooze came out and now coronavirus is a thing. I'm just saying, do the math. You just check out. Number three, an ancient zoo. Many moons before the pyramids were even built, Egyptians were visiting petting zoos. 6,000 years ago, Heracanopolis was a booming town, sitting alongside the Nile River. In Mike Tyson fashion, you would flaunt your wealth by getting an exotic animal as a pet. Yeah, as a pet is very important here. There were excavations done back in the late 19th century by English archaeologists James Quibble and Frederick Green. They were the ones who discovered that this town was thriving with over 10,000 residents. But when further studies were performed, we also discovered the remains of elephants, baboons, and a hippo, right next to the remain of their owner. Of course, what a weird funeral. These archaeologists found remains of baboons surrounding humans. I can only imagine their first thought upon finding this. We found a body next to a hippo. It's is this a crime scene or an unbreakable bond? Animals are cute, you know, even if they're hippos that can eat your head. Still nice. Number two, Otzi the Iceman. Discovered in September 1991, this mummy was found on the border of Austria and Italy. He's Europe's oldest known and natural mummy. He was covered in ice shortly after his death, so most of the 45 year old man from the Copper Age was left in rather good condition. I say that, I mean he's a literal corpse, like bones, but it was good condition for a mummy. A 5,000 year old man was found in ice. Take that Captain America, eat that. Before he died in the Italian Alps, Otzi had a number of health problems. He had arthritis, Lyme disease, and he was lactose intolerant, which I think is the worst of all. Thanks to science, we know that Otzi the Iceman was sharpening his tools right before his death. It's almost like he had a hunch that he was about to be brutally killed. Sorry, Otzi. Number one, the origins of spirituality. Cave drawings go back thousands of years. We're still trying to find the origins of spirituality in a sense. You know, these gods are appearing in all these religions. These half human, half animal hieroglyphs are popping up. We've recently found a cave painting going back 44,000 years ago. That's making us rethink Neanderthals and their ability to create spiritual drawings. Now, a team from Griffith University found this painting in an Indonesian cave in the island of Sulawesi. Again, these half human figures appearing ages ago. This is kind of creepy. This predates the old paintings found in Europe. They were thinking of creatures, these spiritual theanthropies, long before others, meaning that this could be the first example of culture and spirituality ever to exist. Thousands of years from now, archaeologists are going to find this abandoned tunnel in the middle of nowhere, and then right on the ceiling it will say, James was here, and Sharpie. That'll be the next version of this in millions of years. Art is art, even if it's, you know, someone drawing something in a bathroom stall or someone drawing something in a cave 45,000 years ago. I kind of like the latter. A bit. Number 10, the missing link. According to a study posted by Cardiff University, scientists think they have finally found the missing link that foreshadows the Ice Age, and it's a little too real. What did they know before? Well, scientists knew that Ice Age cycles developed due to periodic changes in the Earth's orbit. The small variations in solar energy set off mass of shifts in Earth's climate. But how remained a mystery? Well now, scientists think it has everything to do with the melting of the icebergs. Ha ha ha, well isn't that interesting? When the Earth is in the right position and icebergs begin to melt away from Antarctica, immense volumes of fresh water move into the Atlantic Ocean away from the Southern Ocean. Therefore, the Southern Ocean gets saltier and massive changes in circulation patterns pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. We know that the less CO2 in the atmosphere, the colder the temperature will be as it reduces the greenhouse effect. Therefore, Earth moves towards ice age conditions. Now, I think we can be a little more scared of the ice caps melting. Number nine, lion cubs. Lion cubs in ice? Well, yes, yes indeed. The world is strange and wonderful and it was once covered in a lot of ice. Unian and Dina were the first cave lions to be found and another was found more recently in Yakutia, Russia. Both sets of remains date back to the ice age around 12,000 years ago. The species uncovered went extinct 10,000 years ago and these poor babies died in a really, really sad way. Either their mother died or abandoned them, and the newest cub is so well preserved that you can see how it went to sleep with its little head resting on their paw. They also found two other cave lions, Boris and Sparta, in the same area, both 
perfectly preserved and 18,000 years apart. These two little cubs also helped establish the appearance of cave lions without manes. But the most exciting thing about the remains is that it could be used for cloning now that we've completed the genome. Interesting. Number eight. A wolf head. The wolves we have now are pretty massive, but imagine how big their ancestors must have been. Pavel Efimov was searching for mammoth tusks in Siberia, Russia, when he made an unexpected discovery the head of an Ice Age wolf, perfectly preserved. Its hair, teeth, brain, and ears are fully intact after over, huh, can't believe this, after 40,000 years frozen in the permafrost. These massive creatures were a little over twice the size of modern day wolves and could crush bone with their jaws. Definitely not the most friendly of creatures. It would have been a full grown wolf when it died, but it wasn't killed by humans. Why was the head separated from the body then? Well, scientists believe that it died originally intact, but with the melting and shifting and cracking of the ice, probably separated them. The most exciting part is that now scientists will be able to study the evolution of the modern day wolf. Number seven, disease. I think we've talked about this on the channel before, but here we are again. In August 2016, 21 people were mysteriously infected by anthrax. This is just one terrifying discoveries that scientists have made beneath the ice. Researchers are concerned that some of the world's most deadly viruses are trapped beneath the permafrost from the ice age. And based on this event, they don't seem to be wrong. Not only are they worried about the potential resurfacing of the bubonic plague or smallpox, but something even bigger. Something we may not even have heard of yet. Due to the rapid rate of the ice melting, it is only a matter of time before we figure this out the hard way. We've survived one pandemic. Is another waiting beneath the ice one layer away from our I really hope not. Number six, giant animals. Considering we have started this list off talking about a lot of animals, it seems to make sense that we highlight a theme here. Ever wonder what it would be like to live in the ice age? <laughs> Me neither, except for maybe right now, because it's boiling right now. Oh, it's so hot. Never mind. Way too hot. We're just gonna take this off. Ironically, it's way too hot in the studio today, so here we are. Why? Because everything was so much bigger, and even imagining that terrifies me. Megafauna were large, oversized animals that lived around the time of the Ice Age. In fact, it was their playground. Not only was there, of course, the woolly mammoth, but massive saber toothed tigers, short faced bears, and of course, the above, massive dire wolves. Plus, you can almost guarantee they were always hungry with food being so scarce. I wonder if people will look back in like a thousand years from now and think about how small our animals are. But believe me, from giant Giant wombats that could be mistaken for bison to killer birds. Not a place we would want to live. But they also had some unique survival skills. For instance, the Ice Age rhino was believed to have had a shovel horn to help remove snow. That's kind of neat. Number five, human revival. Now, considering all the technology we have today, unless we have a day after the tomorrow kind of situation, if we have another ice age, we might be okay. Might. But I am pretty optimistic because Homo sapiens were able to survive the ice age, so why not we? Despite not being hairy or thick skinned, they were resourceful and inventive, relying on traps to catch their dinner. The hunting tools they had would have been limited to stones, knives, and arrowheads. Anything more complicated would have been really, really, really rare. So instead, they used traps, and this is where it would get kind of gruesome. Once their prey would fall prey to whatever traps were sent, the men would surround the injured creature and maul it to death. Hey, when you're hungry, you're hungry. And in a dog eat dog world, it's a privilege to care about how you will kill your next meal. Number four, mammoth house. What do you do when you don't have bricks and mortar? Well, you build a house out of, um, bones that you just find lying around. Yeah. According to an article posted in 2020, Russian archaeologists found a massive circle made of the bones of Ice Age creatures. The bones are from creatures that lived over 20,000 years ago. Not only are there five dozen mammoths, but reindeer, horses, bears, wolves, red and arctic foxes. And this isn't the only circle like it. There are around 70 Ice Age bone circles in 25 sites in Ukraine and Russia. Some of the bones were still joined together, which meant that they still had meat on their bones when they were added. In the middle, there are wooden poles that were presumably used to support roofs made of animal hides. There is still speculation as to whether they were used for homes, ritual, or storage buildings, but still, a house of bones sounds odd to us, I know, but imagine having to withstand cold without the tech we have now. Ah, <sighs> desperate times call for desperate measures. Number three, mini ice ages. Did you know that we may get a mini ice age before we get a really big one? Like a test run, kind of, if you will. Though they aren't as deadly, they can still cause widespread famine and disease due to failed crops. The last recorded mini ice age happened between the 12th and 14th century, peaking from 1500 to 1850. It mostly took place in the Northern hemisphere of Europe where seas 
would freeze repeatedly and glaciers would crush whole villages. This happened quite often in places like Switzerland. But even worse, just like in Game of Thrones, they would go whole years, whole years, Without summer. No thank you. No one quite knows what caused this tiny ice age, but scientists have a couple of ideas. One, that it had something to do with volcanic activity, and that it had an effect on the solar energy the Earth was receiving. Whatever the reason, it definitely provides yet another explanation as to why the Middle Ages were just so sad. So sad. Number two, more CO2 is a good thing? Hmm. Considering the first point on this list, we know that less CO2 in the atmosphere will lead to colder temperatures, which could mean ice ice baby. But considering the very, very real concept of global warming and the fact that we are injecting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, could that mean we will stave off an ice age. Well, scientists think this might be so. While we definitely need to figure out how to control our output so other problems don't arise, it could help fight off the next ice age, right? Weird. There's an upside to everything. According to Cambridge University, although the planetary cycle makes an ice age inevitable, like the seasons, the only way it can happen is if the CO2 level is too low. At this point, we have pumped so much CO2 into the air that even if it all stopped tomorrow, we would still have enough to keep an ice age at bay for at least a thousand years. However, However, if we keep going the way we're going, well, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I'm like, what do you want? Snowball, hot earth. Depends what you like, I guess. How the heck are we gonna get out of this one, you know? And last but not least, the snowball. What's more terrifying than an ice age? A giant snowball. No, not the one that you made to throw at your neighbor. I mean the one that could be our earth. A snowball earth is a very, very terrifying possibility, though probably not as likely. A snowball earth would destroy much of life on earth and sink our entire world into a deep freeze. And it did. The Snowball Earth was a series of ice ages that occurred during the Neoproterozoic era that were so massive the entire planet froze over 500 million years ago. Why did it happen? Well, scientists from MIT speculate that it was due to a drop in heat so steep that it triggered a runaway effect. The ice expanded so quickly the Earth didn't have time to recover. This drop in temperature might have been prompted by several volcanic eruptions that happened in quick succession. Scientists are unsure as to whether humans could make this happen, but if it did, we wouldn't be able to stop it. At the speed at which the Earth's atmosphere is changing because of us, who knows what could happen? It could go so far, it goes the other way around. You just don't know. Mm -hmm.